that, uh, you know, from looking at your calf films, you have a blockage that looks like it would be appropriate for a robotic bypass. So we're going to go ahead and do the operation, but I've got three priorities. The three priorities are number one, keeping you alive. By the way, nobody ever argues about these. Number two is fixing what's wrong and fixing it right. And the third one is to do it in the way that's least stressful for you. So, as, but as long as we don't compromise number one or number two. So if I can do it in the scope, in, a, in the, using the robotic scope system, that's what I'll do. So what we do is we go ahead and we put you under anesthesia, put in a special breathing tube that allows us to drop your left lung, just breathe the right side. And then we kind of tilt you up on this with the left side up a little bit and we clean that all off and put in three tubes between the ribs. Through the center tube, we put a robotic scope. Through the other two tubes, we can insert different instruments in and out to do different jobs. And the tubes and the scope and those instruments are attached to these mechanical arms, levers and pulleys. And those are connected by computer to a console in the corner of the room. That scope has two channels in it. One gets ported to each eye so I can actually look into it and see with three-dimensional vision. I can see in 3D with depth perception. It's ten times magnified. And so once I get everything in the right place, you're under anesthesia, I go sit in the corner of the, of the room in, at the console. What we do is, the first thing I do is I make sure that the artery on your heart that we're bypassing, or arteries, are number one where we can get to them, and number two on the surface of the heart so that we can do this in a less invasive fashion. That's really the biggest decision point for us. About 5% of the time, the calf films will suggest that the arteries are where we can get to them, but they're not. They're buried down in the heart muscles. So about 5% of the time, we'll start with, these, with the scope and the instruments, the three port sites, and we will realize we can't do it that way. So then we take all those things out, and we go ahead and make a regular incision and perform the operation. You need the bypass anyway. We were hoping to avoid the median sternotomy, but if we can't, then we go ahead and take care of that. That's plan C. It's plan C because it takes the longest to recover from and has the highest rate of blood transfusion and atrial fibrillation and other things like that that can happen around the time of surgery. Now assuming that the artery in your heart is on the surface where we can get to it, then we go ahead and use that robotic scope system to get the artery on the inside of your chest wall, that internal mammary artery, ready to use. At that point we need to make a second decision and that is can we do this with two more port sites and completely, totally endoscopically? Or is it something that we, there's something um, that's going to keep us from doing that safely? Again, getting back to priority number one and priority number two. If there's a concern that we can't do this completely endoscopically, then what we do is we take out the scope system, take that middle incision and make it a little bit bigger, and just go directly between the ribs and perform the splicing job by hand. Don't stop the heart, don't put you on the heart-lung machine. If we do think we can go forward and do it completely endoscopically, then we make two more port sites, one right underneath your ribs and one up here just underneath your collarbone to insert a, sta a stabilizer, which is something that holds the heart still, and something um, we can insert through this other working port, a stapler which will create the splicing job or other pieces of equipment that we need to put in and out of the chest. Assuming we can do it that way, then that's plan A. And that's plan A because you're only in the hospital two to three days and you can return to full activity in two to three weeks. Nothing else we do in heart surgery really has anything close to that. If it's plan B, then you're in the hospital about three to five days and you can return to full activity in four to six weeks. And plan C, which is a regular incision in the, in the middle of your chest, healing that bone is what takes so long and so people are in the hospital four to seven days and they uh, can return to full activity at about three months. So big difference in recovery time.